there's a joy for queer people. It's not just coming out, it's not just finding or checking all of the serious points in your life. It's how much gayer you get day by day. You just get gayer and gayer and more queer. Like you feel your power grow. It is wild. Hi, I'm Eugene Liang, and I am looking back at some moments that have shaped my identity and career. This is Becoming Eugene Liang. I hope I am dressed. I probably am most recognizable to people from my time at BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed was a really fascinating lateral career step for me. Um, Again, I was hyper-focused on writing and directing and was applying to Sundance Labs. I was doing the typical slow, sad upward track that we all do as young filmmakers, where you're just staring into the mirror every day saying like, when will life begin? But I was um, desperate for a full-time job and BuzzFeed Video was just this fledgling new department in 2013 when I joined. I was already, I think a lot of people can relate to, small town girl, big city, you know, far away from the family, so I could establish this really vibrant, wonderful, close community, spread my wings as a young gay man. Even though I had told my parents that I was gay when I was 18, I'm just one of those classic cases of a family that didn't talk about it probably for 15 years after that. So even if you come out, it doesn't mean that you actually have come out into the open because other people are just ready to close the door back on you. And I love my family, and you'll see with some of the future work and the exposure I had online, it forced quite a bit of that conversation to happen more quickly than it might have naturally. The last thing I ever expected was to have to confront my identity, which I was already doing internally and with my family behind four walls, to millions of people online. And that's where you start seeing my journey really sort of skyrocket. Luckily, I think, I I was more well prepared as an older person. By the time I was in my 30s, I had enough safety, personal security, that I could take bigger swings with exposing myself. Not that way. <laughs> Don't Google me, you'll see <laughs> some really embarrassing things. The first thing everyone has to know is if, if they are in a safe, secure space. And once they have that, some people just might not be on the same ride with you, and that's okay. But some people are just a little slower. They're just a little slower on that journey. And that was my situation with my family. Let's see what we have next. The drag video is really interesting because that was, I think, the fourth official Try Guys video. There were no casts at BuzzFeed prior to us. We were the first to say, oh, we should just repeat ourselves as a cast. This is an interesting dynamic. The worst was shaving the legs, and that took two hours. Poor ma'am was like sh on her knees shaving and got like my actual leg hair in her mouth. It was disgusting. Hi, Mayhem. Hi, Mom. <laughs> She's still my mom. You know what I love about this video, too, is that that was the first time I tucked. That was the first time I completely shaved my legs. That was the first time I ever had that much makeup on my face. And look at me now. And the drag video was the first one that I actually personally produced and edited. And the previous videos were like, men try women things. One, no other guy in the office would do it besides us four. And two, allegedly I have you know, a very distinct perspective and I did understand that eventually there's value with the way that I spoke and the way that I brought a marginalized point of view to things. Having that perspective be just you laid bare on camera, our lives became the story and the content. I'm gonna go tuck in the bathroom. Oh, sh oh my God. I think I did it. Once the group had formed, was there either pressure or like a conversation of like who you would be? Because it, to me, from an outsider's perspective, if you were a Spice Girl, you would be Posh Spice. Oh my God, thank you. That's so nice of you. <laughs> Think of your friend group, right? You naturally sort of inhabit like, oh, she's a little more Sailor Jupiter, she's a little more Sailor Mars. I just happen to be more Mars, naturally. Having to deal with this idea of presentation within a cast was really quick because I'm so used to it. I'm so used to covering and presenting. I think a lot of queer people are like, do you change a little bit when grandma comes to the dinner table? You know what I mean? Like, those are those things that I'm just more well equipped to be, um, I guess, hyper cognizant of, as opposed to like my lovely cast members, Zach and Keith. Sometimes you're just really jealous of white men. They can just walk into any situation and be like, I own this room. I own this country. So initially it was very obvious I was, as you said, like a little sexier, but it was like, I mean, you're gonna look spicy in a pile of marshmallows, you know what I mean? I love Zach and Keith. I will f***ing go to war for them. But they are the softest, sweetest boys you will ever meet. So I basically just had to like, and they're like, sexy and serious. Wow. Next milestone. So 
This was one of my proudest moments when I was a producer at BuzzFeed. I was sitting on this rare gold mine, a platform that reaches millions of people instantly. And if I'm not doing something with it that speaks both to like my inner scared child and hopefully a lot of viewers out there who also can benefit, then what am I doing in this space? Queer Prom has always existed outside in different variations for different cities and different events, but this sort of idea of flying in, you know, six young people with their families to experience sort of this like fun LA treatment of a prom was really special. And it was the first time I feel like I was able to say on camera that I was queer. There was like a rumor mill always since I was on camera, since I started like, is he, isn't he? Which we see in every level of media and entertainment, especially kind of surrounding and swirling around people's identities since the, you know, Hayes Code. And that bullshit was always so awful for me to like wear every day, like go home to my boyfriend and just him being like, well, there's all these people asking about if you're gay or not, not being able to say it explicitly, but it's because I wasn't sure about where certain people very close to me in my life would land. That was even my life with a, a relatively liberal family into my 30s and as someone who was seen on camera all the time. And at that point, in drag and wearing like, you know, lots of like gender non-conforming clothes, it still was to Asian communities especially, seen as sort of like artistic fantasy and expression. So when I did something like Queer Prom, it was still seen as far enough like arm's length extension of something in my persona, but it wasn't my sexuality. You know, it was my artistic expression. Ooh. One of my favorite comments someone had said when this first came out was, oh, Eugene's not just coming out as gay, he's coming out as himself, which was really just right on the money and made me that actually made me tear up a little bit. The actual title of this video is I'm Gay, Eugene Lee Yang, which people had to force me to do. I didn't even want my face in the thumbnail. I didn't even want to be in it initially. I just wanted to do something that for me was a very comfortable, innate form of expression. This entire project from the moment that I said I have to do it to the moment it premiered was less than a month. And I choreographed it, I directed it, I just went, all right, this is what you've trained for. And it just kind of, you know, it was like putting on my old pair of shoes. But I was most worried about the fact that I was the central focus of it. Because I had initially conceived it with the idea of casting someone else, because I was more comfortable with this idea of creating a short film, a music video that told this story but didn't push my identity or face forward. I then realized that through the internet, through being able to find myself in front of millions of people, if I can show them this while also then bringing in every single tool that they haven't seen from me from my filmmaking toolbox, that way it crosses creatively will create something special and unique and powerful. It is so rare for me to watch something back and not criticize every small thing about it. Anything I do, I just like look back and I say, this could be better, this could be bigger, this could be brighter, this could be bolder. And this was just one of those things that it felt like an exhale. And there's no way to go back and say, I'm gonna control the breath. I watch it and I just feel my, my body just sort of deflating and I like, I exhale with it. I just can't see it being anything other than what it was and it was appropriate for the time. It was appropriate for my journey and it made the family members I had who were completely in the dark about it started a lot of conversations. And thankfully those conversations, some of them had a positive ending. But if they were gonna see me really come out to not just them, but to like everyone, I'm gonna do it in my most authentic voice. It's the one time really on, on the internet, I'm just happy that that can continue to live on and I wouldn't change it for the world. Thousands of Asians in the U.S. have become targets of harassment. It was just one of these times where with the COVID uh, pandemic, this heightened focus on Asians and immigration and the China virus was just the right time to like be able to drop some education into that conversation because we know on those online conversations happen, especially during a uh, worldwide pandemic, education goes out the window. Like people don't want to know about facts. We have actual leaders coming up with the most bull stories to take things like critical race theory out of our schools, which isn't even in our schools. The passage of the infamous Chinese Exclusion Act in 1882. The first law in the United States that barred immigration solely based on race. This is essentially critical race theory. Being able to put that out there for anyone to see, even if one middle school teacher picked it up and showed it to their kids, I would feel like that this was a worthwhile endeavor. We can't responsibly live in a society now even as artists, without engaging critically in these conversations 
because unfortunately politics are just like just one step away from entertainment. It's almost the same thing. The Stop AAPI Hate Reporting Center found that bullying, assaults, and verbal abuse were becoming more normalized across the United States. I had a relatively diverse community growing up. There weren't many other Asians until I was in middle school and a lot of tech companies moved to Central Texas. It's becoming more rare, the experience of growing up in a town where you are like the only of one particular other. You know, I got bullied and I got pushed around and people just thought I was funny and that my, my food smelled funny and that was like, for me, extremely formative. They tried to create a Asian American club and our principal, we all got the signatures and our principal shot it down because he said Asian Americans didn't contribute enough to American society besides the railroads. Like that was the type of town I grew up in. He said, you got diversity club, that's enough, which was still like fun because it was like all the non-white people hanging out. <laughs> I learned how to step. It was a lot of cultural sharing in a place like a small Texas town. What else is he hiding? Who's the real him? Who am I? Nimona, I am so excited for people to see this. The original story, Nimona, is by a, an incredible creative force, Andy Stevenson. Actually originated as this, um, I believe, a grad project that was a webcomic and then became a graphic novel, but it has a huge queer cult following. The character that I play is Sir Ambrosius Goldenloin. I was very lucky to have been cast in 2020, actually, so I've been with this for three years. The reason my name came up because I was already kind of asking my agents, like, I would love to start voice acting and being a totally different character where no one can see my face. This came through directly from the producers because when they translated Ambrosius Goldenloin to the film version, they essentially made him Asian. I would find out later that one of the animators had used several references and I was included in it visually because I guess I've done something in my career where they said, I'm gonna think of a gay ass Asian man and this character needs to be just like right or the bat, like that's a gay man. I don't care what you say, look at his hair, look at that face. So they brought me in for the audition. I auditioned like everyone else and I landed the part. My version of Golden Loin is a little more warm, a little more charming and certainly very much obviously in love with the other lead, Ballister. It's like not a question. And that's what's beautiful about this film is that I'm not ruining anything. It's not like a, oh, will they, won't they? It's not a, oh, you should watch this so they have this revelation in the end of the third act. They're gay from the jump. It's just gay. And to have my first voice performance experience be a character that is dependent on, at the very least, me informing my perspective, infusing him with my perspective, because that's what the directors really wanted. I thought I was gonna walk in and be way more nightly, and they said, no, 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 no. We want the essence of your queer experience to be, like, to permeate this character. And that's not something you hear from higher ups in Hollywood every day. It was very fortunate and beautiful experience for me to be able to lend part of myself to this character. I'm not the villain here. I know. I know. I'm sorry for everything. And on top of that, Nimona herself, she's essentially this wonderful, non-binary, gender non-conforming, just rebel. And I cannot wait for people, especially our community, to be able to see where this story takes us and how it resolves and what that message is in the end. It's a fantastic action adventure film with a lot of humor and a lot of heart, but it's also very much for, for us as a community. I'm just really blessed to have been part of this, this film. Thank you so much for revisiting these milestones with me. This has been Becoming Eugene Lee Yang. I can't wait to become even gayer. That's what's gonna happen right after you stop this video. I'm gonna be out there being so much more gay. It's gonna be wild. In a year, I'm gonna be in like my final form. Just a fucking unicorn on fire. You're gonna see like a comet across the sky and that's gonna be my gay ass just like going, yum! <laughs> just blinding all the bigots. <laughs>